Hi, I'm Dominique Gordon, and this is Wine Gatherings demonstrating how to savor a bottle of sparkling using a butter knife. You can, I've even seen it done with a spoon. Now, what is savoring? It's the actual act of a blade, a soldier's sword, the saber, coming in contact with the glass and shearing that cork straight off. So the soldiers would still be able to enjoy their beverage while remaining horseback. Now, although I don't recommend doing that, I do recommend these five tips and tricks um, to set you up for success, success and consistency that you can do this anywhere all the time. And that starts with number one, use, excuse me, use champagne from France or sparkling wine in the traditional method as the glass will be thicker and provide a much cleaner sheared top. Secondly, it needs to be cold. And we're talking about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you go and grab a bottle at the grocery store off the end cap, even though it's chilled there, drive home, put it back in the refrigerator for at least an hour to get give you um, a, a really good experience. Secondly, or thirdly, we need to identify the seam. The seam is the weakest part of our bottle. And there'll be two seams. Typically, it is not behind the wine label because it's visually unappealing. So you know, feel for that seam. I have found mine. Next, you would be how do we hold the bottle in order to do this act? It's going to be at a 45 degree angle, and that's best done by putting your thumb in the punt here at the bottom, holding the bottle with the rest of your fingers and holding it out from you a bit. We'd be using the dull end of our butter knife and you're just sliding the bottle or the blade up and down the bottle. We don't come off, we don't come at it from the side, you, right along that edge, and you'll uh, continue up and off. You want that energy of your arm still to carry it all the way through, and that is helping to direct where this cork is going to go. You wanna be outside doing this um, with some good distance between you because this cork can fly a good 20 feet. And ideally, you'll have some lawn or soft surface to receive the cork so you have a beautiful keepsake like this from my wedding almost 12 years ago now. So you can see how the glass is completely sheared off, but the cork is still cinched around versus most typical champagne corks that will look like this. So I hope you can do it. I know you can, just follow these steps. So we, we have our bottle of champagne. Um, it's nice and cold. We have found our seam. We know how we're going to do this. Oh, should also have a vessel or carafe nearby because of all of that pressure coming off so quickly from the glass. Um, the, this is going to want to overflow, if you will. So be ready to receive it. Finally, we need to remove this whole top section here. And so we have the foil that we need to remove. Most will have a pull tab. Here we need to get everything off. There we go. Now, if like myself here, I have a little bit of paper that got left behind. I really just want to remove that fingernails um, so it doesn't slow down the action with the blade. Okay, finally the very top comes off. We have this wire um, cage, officially it's called a mousse and that's because of all the pressure in this bottle. And to remove it, it's six twist. We remove it all together. And with that, I'll continue this outside. <laughs>
still kept the glass nice and tight and that cork cinched. Yes, we have a cavalry sword for my husband's time as an officer at a cavalry unit. Today was the perfect opportunity to find a new use for the sword. Cheers. <laughs>